Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, we actually have some pretty interesting stuff going on over here, where we have, well, two kind of really big Xbox news stories to go and cover, and also some pretty cool news when it comes to the future of the next big convention as well going for Xbox, which we ideally will get to hear a little bit more about upcoming games and all that stuff as well. So we're going to talk about that. So first and foremost, we got some good, good news. It was also apparently a huge deal that I want to kind of go and, well, do a deep dive onto as well. Now, if you guys may or may not know, we've had a lot of big drama when it comes to Xbox, Xbox Game Pass, but a massive, massive game is actually coming to Xbox Game Pass once again, and it does kind of seem like this goes and is somewhat shaking up the really current narrative of that Game Pass is horrible, people hate it, and it doesn't make any games any money, as well as also has some other cool stuff too as well, with some people being very upset. I don't think that's really necessarily cool, but cool to talk about and discuss to see the future of Xbox, so make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on. We have the Twitter and Twitch room now below. If you guys want to follow it, of course, the Amazon links for all the consoles and junk, and let's dive into the video. So very first and foremost, let's go dive into a little bit more of I think let's let's see the drama first because I don't usually like kind of covering up too much drama it's fun but at the same time you don't want to be too much of a drama channel but over here we actually had a pretty big outrage when it comes to Xbox so I'm gonna do a little bit of negative a little bit of positive I feel like I have a little bit of counterbalance for this where Xbox users aren't even bothering right now with their upcoming free games and a lot of folks are now actually kind of assuming that some things actually might be getting shut down on the Xbox side. So first and foremost, there's if you guys don't know, there's two basically two big major separations of like Xbox operations. It's kind of like how before you said the PlayStation Plus and PS Now. There is still Xbox Gold which is funny enough, at this point, like that, it was iconic back in the day. Like, your boy had Xbox Gold, my 360 times, all that good stuff. I liked it. I vibed it. I roll with it. And then part two of it, we also have now currently Game Pass. Although most folks at this point probably are pushing more towards Game Pass. It's a better deal. It makes more sense. And in theory, a lot of folks are probably just going to be going and, well, encouraging this transition to get rid of Xbox Gold and Xbox Live and just put it all towards Xbox Game Pass. Just makes sense. But right now, a lot of folks are kind of saying that the Xbox Gold slash Live is not even worth it to even exist. And this is why we're kind of talking about how we may want to segue into something else. So if you pay for any gaming subscription service, I'm almost certain that, like me or them, you'll have determined that it's basically impossible to stay on top of your backlog. If uh, the year's new releases weren't enough, we're constantly being spoiled for choice by freebies. Sony has recently just also had their brand new ones. We talked about this on a prior video with the new Call of Duty Black Ops Cold the War, Alan Wake Remastered, and Endling Extraction, which if you guys have PlayStation Plus, you guys get all those games for free. Very nice to go and see that if you it's just included. It's nice. But one of the bigger things to note is that Xbox users are not and have not been happy. We've actually made videos on this before on the topic. And so not necessarily more so to like hate on Xbox. It's more so just to be like, hey, for us. Like, we want a good deal. If you're, have, if you're paying the extra money for Xbox Live, you want something good. You want it to be worth your time. You want to make it worth your money, or else why are you going to go pay for it? If Netflix doesn't make a lot of good shows, you're not going to care about it. So basically, the monthly free game services that they also offer for Xbox Live, and, well, they're not good. They haven't been good in a very long time. So if users aren't subscribed to Game Pass Ultimate, they're required to pay for Xbox Live Gold in order to play, you know, play games online. So it's a service that most would be paying for anyway, with or without the free games. So it is also getting them a free pass too, it's a little like cream on the top. With that said, fans believe that their freebies have been going downhill in a major way lately, and we've actually seen a lot of folks talk about this, which is why, once again, kind of push more of the Game Pass narrative. So games with gold sucks now. It sucked for a while, at least a year. Reddit user Androidic Mammal wrote. The games we get are all seared to your games at best, good for an hour or two of fun at most. The games they are getting on PlayStation these days are ten times better. For example, they got Alan Wake Remastered this month. It was better than what we got with uh, when we got backwards compatible games. What the hell is going on at Microsoft? I always believe that this could be the beginning of the end for the service, which I kind of think it might. I, get, I really don't care about the GWG anymore. I'm thankful for every Xbox 360 game I got from them for free throughout the years, and they are really free. Even without the subscription, I can play them whenever I want. I also think GWG will be getting shut down in one or two years as well. A lot of pups are saying, like, yeah, the game seemed kind of sunned down. A lot of folks didn't really like all these original games, and it kind of seems mediocre, which is kind of true. Like, I kind of feel like a lot of folks have a lot of negative reception, and that's typically if you have a company or a business and you keep on seeing all these folks out there saying, like, we don't want this, or just I'm not going to even download it. You're not going to go to want to pay the staff to deal with it. You're not going to want to go pay people like the millions of dollars to get the games. And at the same time, you're like, well, just go on Game Pass. Like we could go kind of take like one headache off our plate and move over to Game Pass, which I think a lot of folks are saying is going to probably happen. We actually had a pretty interesting thing over here when it comes to GTA. So as you guys do or do not know, a lot of big games out there obviously exist, like games like GTA, and sometimes games like, say, like uh, Destiny or GTA do end up on, well, Game Pass or Game Pass Rotations. And this kind of actually goes to show to go show the Grand Theft Auto uh, revenue 
you guys can kind of see their overall random numbers, where they have stuff back in, like, say, 2015. It's also insane on how much money Grand Theft Auto has actually made. Whenever they have their PC release, ever since then, it basically had a big, big spike up. Like, some of the numbers were on the lower side, but they had the Xbox One, bumped up huge price point-wise, PC release as well, and then ever since it released up on PC, it has never dipped under $100 million in the quarterly revenue numbers. But... Some of the bigger things to go and note is you guys look at over in 2020 in quarter four, they actually had Xbox Game Pass. And whenever they actually had Xbox Game Pass added, it essentially made and bolstered up the entire, like, well, game itself. Probably a good example for that on why is, well, you probably just have more people having accessibility to Xbox itself, like Xbox Game Pass. And that basically means with that, they have a chance to go and have more microtransactions and spending money in the game, which is a big way of how Grand Theft Auto makes their money. A lot of microtransactions. And this is, once again, why they may just want to go push a lot more games on to say game pass like get rid of xbox gold and say whatever go go go, go get game pass it'll give you the same stuff you get more games better option it's kind of like once again they had the ps plus ps now and then at some point they just combined it all into one big singular service with various tiers to make it just easier for people because i mean some folks may not even even still know that xbox gold still exists and xbox live still exists i was one of those people like i said back in the day i loved it i had it like it was just if you're an og gamer you understand but over time Game Pass is just better. It's just a better deal, better offer, better everything in between, and that's what most people probably want at the end of the day. It's like the bigger bigger priority. You know what I mean? So it kind of just goes to show that some folks were also saying that things like Game Pass were also not always the most helpful. Now, I don't want to speak on behalf of like a smaller indie game company because maybe in theory it would still be better for them to release the game on PlayStation and Steam. Because you never know, sometimes people really like playing indie games on, say, Steam. Or maybe you have a Twitch streamer who mostly plays games on Twitch. I mean, they still play console games, but it's a very much prior more, like, prioritizing on the PC side, at least for me, on my perspective as a Twitch partner. So that does also have a lot of extra merit for free marketing and people checking out games or drops or integrations or whatever it might be for your games. Or even mods. Sometimes just having a, a game be moddable adds a lot more stuff. So something like Game Pass and Grand Theft Auto makes more sense. You have the higher player base, you deal with microtransactions, and it almost kind of feels like what they might want to keep on trying to push. Something like we want to have in more games to be included to go and, well, like I said, <laughs> go and just have them for free. Put in microtransactions. You go sell cosmetics and skins or items or money or whatever it might be for the game. And that's just an extra benefit. You have a few hundred million people that might go and play Xbox games throughout the years. You know, in general, like, don't forget, like, it's a 20 million-ish or so. But, like, people kind of come and go all the time or new releases or whatever it might be. And if you have a game on there that's free, it might also bolster up your multiplayer player base. Like I said, you might get microtransactions. So so the other day is actually maybe not the worst, but maybe you also have to have people still want to play the game. So a game like GTA, it makes sense to have that on there. But for GTA 6, when that releases, it doesn't make sense, and they probably will not be a day one uh, Game Pass release. Unless it's like a huge, like, $50 million, $500 million deal and microtransactions, then maybe, sure. I can maybe see it after like a year or two, maybe, but as of right now, it's kind of weird. But a lot of, so we've had a little bit of a controversy, where some people are saying that, like, Game Pass is bad for indie developers, which, once again, it might just depend on the game. Uh, we're not really sure if Game Pass pays for, like, a number of hours play. Like, let's say there's, like, a big pool of, like, I don't know how they do for TikTok. They have, like, 5 billion hours of people playing games, and then maybe your game does a million hours, so you get paid that portion or ratio. We don't know. Or just a flat rate. I'm sure it depends on a lot of different types of contracts and things and everything else in between. But yeah, it's kind of crazy to go and see that, well, these numbers are so, so big. So this is in the last time GTA was on Game Pass, the GTA franchise revenues went from $179 million to 210 on a quarterly basis. Microsoft has also proven that the Game Pass effect is real. Users will buy games when the title rotates out. So basically, like, they know the game was on there, they played it on Game Pass for a while, and now that it's off of Game Pass, they'll go and buy the game, which, in all honesty, I'd probably be more upset about that, but, I mean, maybe that happens. They say this is a good strategy that uh, it takes to, I think it was they say two, uh, has used to periodically help spark, wait, that's like the game itself, like, whatever the game is, I don't, I've never seen the acronym TT, whatever, if I wasn't making a video, I'd be like, no, <laughs> on the top of that. But basically, that helps spark the player engagement, game save and the in-game purchases within the GTA Online. So it's kind of crazy to go and see this narrative where people, or some people are saying it's awful and Game Pass sucks, and some people are saying, like, nah, it's actually really good for things like GTA, etc. And as well, if you guys are kind of curious, there will be actually Xbox at Gamescon for this year as well. In case you guys are curious in updates or conventions, they do have Xbox and Bethesda on the year for August 23rd or 27th. We'll probably see a bit more information on, well, upcoming games, maybe new releases or anything else in between, but probably for sure a little bit more Star 
Starfield news because it'll be very close towards their release. So give me your thoughts and comments down below on the Xbox Live, on the Xbox Game Pass, and everything else because I would love to go and hear it. As well as make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on Twitter and Twitch down below with the Amazon links too. And I appreciate you guys all so much for watching here in the first place.